In our previous 2JS tutorial, we went over the basics of shaders. We started with the introduction to the web graphics pipeline, then we went over what vertex and fragment shaders are, and even wrote some simple shaders in GLSL, the graphics library shading language, which looks sort of like C. In this video, we'll take our shading skills to the next level by learning about uniforms and varyings. Let's jump right in. Just as a quick refresher, the vertex shader is responsible for the position and the fragment shader is responsible for the color. This is the code from our previous tutorial. So what we're going to do is refactor this vertex shader. What I've done here is basically have the same code. The main thing to focus on here is that we are declaring a vec4 known as result and we're going to set the vec4 to the positional x, y, and z coordinates and at the end we're going to multiply it into the projection and model view matrix to get the GL position. The reason I'm doing this is just for a code readability. So as you can see, we got our basic little rectangular box. This one is different from before, but I picked these dimensions 24 by 24 by four, just so that it's gonna be easier to visualize. Uniforms are variables that can be passed in from our main application into the shader program. A common variable that is usually passed in is the time variable. Let's see how it works. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is to define your uniform data. Here I'm creating an object. You can name this whatever you want, but I'm just going to call it u underscore to denote that this is a uniform variable. And in here, we're going to set two things, the type f, which stands for float, and the value. So we're going to initialize it to be the current elapsed time that we have in our test scene. We're also going to update this uniform data on every render and get the elapsed time. The next step is to actually pass it into our shader. So here, the first thing that you're going to want to do is set the uniforms variable that can be passed into the shader material. Here, I'm just passing uniform data, which is the variable that I declared up here. When this changes inside of the render loop, it's also going to change inside of the shader material. Additionally, you're going to want to add this uniform like so inside of your vertex shader. This is going to bind the time variable that you are passing in from the uniform data into the vertex shader so that it is actually available to use. Right now, we just initially set the position x, y, and z data. Here, what I'm going to do is replace it with position.y plus sign of u time. This means that our box should go up and down. And of course, at the bottom here, we're going to set the GL position to be the position matrix times the model view matrix times the result. So as you can see, it is sort of going up and down in a sine wave format. You can see all the vertices are going up and down. So now that we have our uniform time variable inside of our shader material, we can just sort of play around with it however we want. So before what I had was the converting the 2D box into a 2D sine wave plane. And we did that by setting the Y variable to be the sign of the position relative to Z. So here you've got our basic little wave like 2D plane. Now let's add the time variable and see what happens. So here I'm going to comment that out and instead of just passing in the Z position to the Y coordinate, we're also going to add the time variable here. And so now, as you can see, it has become a little bit of a wave. Pretty cool, right? Now let's take it to the next step. Now let's turn this 2D sine wave plane into a sine wave box by adding the Y position to the result. So now we've got our wavy box. I think the frequency of the waves on this box make it look a little weird. So let's sort of decrease the frequency. What I'm doing is changing the waviness of the box by updating the frequency, just dividing the position Z by four. So now as you can see, the box is a lot less wavy. And here what I'm gonna do is just add an amplitude to the waviness just so that it is sort of accentuated really nicely. And as you can see, we've got a super wavy box. And this is basically how you can use uniform data to change the vertex shader. And of course, you can also use the same uniform data in fragment shader. So again, you're gonna to need to call set uniform float time before the main function. This is going to bind to the uniform data that you're passing in over here. Here, I'm going to set this to be the absolute value of the sign of the time. Recall that sign goes between zero and negative one. So when it is 
less than zero, it is going to basically be set to zero for the GL flag color, and that's gonna turn it to be completely black for a really long time. So let's put in the absolute value so that it always goes between zero and one. As you can see, it is sort of changing between red and uh, complete black because it's the variable is going between zero and one. Varyings are data that you can pass from the vertex shader to the fragment shader. What I'm going to do is pass the positional data. So I'm going to first have to declare a varying variable by saying varying vec3. Inside of the main function in the vertex shader, we're going to set that variable and then it's going to be available automatically inside of the fragment shader. All we have to do is again declare the same variable varying vec3 of position and now we can use this variable inside of our main function for the vertex shader. Here I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. If the positional x is greater than 0 then set the geofrag color to be red. Otherwise set the geofrag color to be green. So here you can see that if the uh, value of x is greater than 0 it's red. If it's less than 0 it is green. Let's do a little bit of a sine cosine thing. We set the value of the frag color to be between zero and red based on sine, and we set it to be between zero and one on the green variable based on cosine. So when I refresh this, you can sort of see it happening live, right? As the green turns to black, the red turns red, and as the red turns to black, the green turns green. And yeah, by now you should have enough knowledge to write some pretty cool shaders in 3JS. If you made it this far, then I'd really appreciate it if you could just hit the like button and consider subscribing for more videos just like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.